Chris and Mike uh, Waltz, kind enough to join us right now. Former Green Beret, I might add, a Republican from Florida, uh, with his thoughts on this. Congressman, um, we don't know for sure whether Hassan Nasrallah, the Hezbollah leader, who was targeted, was indeed killed in this attack. Conflicting reports. But it doesn't seem oftentimes to matter. Different leader, different, different emphasis, same terrorist organization. What do you think? Well, I'm glad to see confirmation of uh, the Saud Fokker, who was behind the Beirut bombing. So to all of our Marines out there, Semper Fi, uh, better late than never in terms of justice for their deaths. And look, I mean, Iran's proxies in Iraq out, you, uh, responsible. You, you, you know this, he was behind. He was behind. I'm sorry, sir, to jump in. The 1983 yeah. Marine Barrack. The 1983 attack, Beirut right? bombing that killed. That's Absolutely. right. They killed Continue. several hundred Marines. And, uh, and, and I'm glad he's dead. Uh, and every Marine out there, I think, is, is smiling right now, number one. Number two, Iran's proxies in Iraq, responsible for over 600 American dead. And you touched on it with General Votel, but at the end of the day, Neil, let's just state the facts here. This administration, the Biden-Harris administration's policies are completely wrong and backwards. You are not going to achieve peace and stability in the Middle East, in Gaza, in in Lebanon or in the Red Sea by dealing with it there. You're dealing with the symptoms of the disease when the actual core of the disease is in Tehran. And I would love to be in the White House press corps and ask Biden or Harris, what have been the consequences, what have been the costs to Iran for launching hundreds of drones at Israel, for uh, sinking international shipping in the Red Sea, for causing the deaths of thousands of Israelis. There's over a hundred Hundred thousand Israelis, Neil, displaced from northern Israel. With their population, that would be the equivalent of three million Americans being displaced off of our border. Uh, of course, Israel is going to have to solve this problem. And for the administration to be, you know, sending its envoys into Beirut and saying, "What concession can we make, Hezbollah?" Uh, is only going to invite more escalation. Every time you hear the word de-escalation out of this administration, think appeasement. And Iran sees opportunity. And we've seen that uh, since October 7th when they tanked any hope of a normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia, because that would have been uh, that would have been awful for the, their prospects of dominating the Middle East, which is ultimately Tehran's goal. We have to go back to maximum pressure and impose costs on the core problem of the disease, and that's Tehran. And as long as they are flush with money by selling their oil at, at uh, market rates or below market rates to China, then they're going to continue to fund terrorism in he with Hezbollah, with Hamas, with the Houthis, and to achieve their goal of wiping Israel off the face of the earth. I mean, it is it, it, they're just fundamentally wrong strategic approach, and we need to say that forcefully and clearly. Well, we should also add that Iran is uh, richer than it has ever been with its oil revenues, as right. is Vladimir Putin in Russia, despite all sanctions and the rest. Well, one thing I did notice, and I want you to respond to our kind of general response to this, and this is from Lloyd Austin, I think before any of this happened, Congressman, uh, saying that uh, the United States will defend Israel if it is attacked by Hezbollah from Lebanon, um, which, of course, happened last weekend. Uh, and we hope that the simmering conflict can be diffused diplomatically. Well, it's pretty clear that it can't. So what now? <laughs> what signal are we sending to Nasrallah, what signal are we sending to Tehran? Because Hezbollah will not move. They won't fire a shot without Iran's approval. What signal are we sending, Mr. Defense Secretary, that makes it very clear there will be serious costs if uh, if um, Hezbollah continues to attack Israel and they have the equivalent of three million people in terms of size of the population that can't go home. That is unsustainable for Israel. They will. The IDF is telling me uh, that they will move Hezbollah north 
of the Latani River, which is the river that they agreed to stay north of after the 2006 war, one way or another. Uh, that is going to happen. So how are we signaling strong support for Israel and how are we signaling serious costs for Tehran uh, if war breaks out? I don't think we are. And therefore, that's inviting. This de-escalation strategy is inviting escalation. And we've seen that month after month since October 7th. Well put, Congressman, thank you and more for your service. Very brave service to this country. Uh, we're still following developments in here. Uh, and we might say that 